I was watching a simple electronics video where he made a PCB layout for an H-Bridge driver using a small number of components, NPN and PNP transistors, resistors, and diodes. And I thought these boards would be useful for me as well, so PCBWay agreed to sponsor a video for me to order these boards and try them out myself. You can also order these boards directly from PCBWay. Right now there's free Christmas coupons and other special offers. The PCB design is based on this schematic from the Circuits Today website. You can read the description of how the circuit works here. And of course you can check out Simple Electronics video for more information and demonstrations. Basically, the way this works, the DC motor needs to have one terminal connected to a positive supply and the other terminal connected to ground to rotate in a certain direction. If you reverse the polarity of those connections on the motor, it'll spin the other direction. So with the H-bridge, this terminal here will connect to ground if this transistor is on, or it'll connect to the positive rail if this transistor is on, and likewise on the other side of the circuit for the other terminal. So to make the motor turn in one direction, we would turn on this transistor by bringing terminal D low, turning on the PNP, connecting the terminal to VCC. At the same time, we would turn on this transistor by bringing terminal A high to bring this terminal down to ground. To spin the other direction, we would turn on this transistor with terminal B going low, and this transistor with terminal C going high. NPN transistors are turned on when the base is brought around 0.6 or so volts or more above the emitter voltage, which is ground, and PNP transistors are turned on when the base is brought 0.6 to 0.8 or so volts below the emitter, which is whatever the positive rail is that we're using. One thing to keep in mind is we don't want to create a short circuit from the positive rail to ground, so we can't turn on these two transistors at the same time or these two transistors at the same time because we'll create a path from the positive rail through the transistors to ground. This will draw excessive current and possibly damage the transistors. These diodes protect the transistors from back EMF generated by the motor. I'm using the same diodes, same transistors, but instead of 1K resistors, I'm using 300 ohms because I want to experiment with different amounts of supply voltage, so I want to be able to bring the supply low and still have enough base drive current to turn on the transistors adequately. And for now, I'm just going to use 5 volts in my circuit. Here's the truth table for controlling the motor. So you can go forward or reverse by bringing certain pins to ground or VCC and leaving others disconnected or connecting them to a safe VCC or ground as noted. When all the control pins are disconnected or configured this way here, the motor is basically disconnected from the supply rail and it will spin down. But if you want to break it immediately, or as fast as possible, you just need to make sure both motor terminals are at the same voltage, so you're basically short-circuiting the motor, draining any energy, and stopping it as fast as possible. So here, terminal A and C would be set to the positive rail, turning on these two bottom transistors and connecting both motor terminals to ground. On the video Simple Electronics made, he's manually controlling inputs A, B, C, and D to spin the motor in both directions demonstrating how it works. And when I finished assembling my board, I did a quick test as well with the wires on a breadboard, making sure I can run the motor in both directions. The motor spins fast, so I tried to slow it down by putting something here and even making it bang against the casing the motor is in, and it also gives us a way to hear how fast it's spinning. What I really wanted to do was try PWM control using this PCB, and see if I can make the motor go a bit slower. So I set up an Arduino Uno with four pins to control inputs A, B, C, D on the H-Bridge board. I'm connecting the control input A and C to a PWM output on the Arduino. So that means I'm going to be turning on the top two transistors as needed, but when I turn on the bottom two transistors, they're going to be receiving on-off pulses at different rates, allowing us to control the amount of current through the motor on average and control its speed. So this is a brute force sketch. It's not set up fancy or efficient, and there's lots of room for error, so I have to make sure I'm controlling the pins correctly and not accidentally short-circuiting the power supply. 
In this example, running in a certain direction, I set the control pin D to a low to turn on the PNP transistor. So I bring this pin low, this PNP turns on, and in order to finish connecting the motor to ground, I need to bring input A high to turn this transistor on, which I'm going to do with PWM pulses. So using analog write, I send a certain PWM duty cycle between 0 and 255 out to the A pin, and I wait one and a half seconds, and I loop through several times, increasing the PWM duty a little bit each time. So as I keep this A input turned on more and more gradually, this motor will be able to run faster and faster. When I get it up to the speed I wanted, I just disable the motor and let it coast to a stop. Then I want to run in the other direction, so I do the same sort of thing. I turn on this transistor, and then I PWM control this transistor here, and gradually bring the motor up to speed in the opposite direction. And just to have the code feature in here, to stop the motor with braking, I bring terminals A and C high, turning on these two transistors, connecting the two motor terminals to ground. So that's a nice, compact, functional circuit board. Thanks to Simple Electronics for designing this and making it easy for us to order this or just breadboard it ourselves. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring the project. Thanks for watching.